Oh, this is big. This is a dream come true for Hilo. Sometimes nature gives you enough warnings, and this, in this particular case, nature did. You know, even though I introduced the bill, I ended up voting against it. It happened to an unborn child. Recruiting physicians to the Big Island is not an easy uh, fit. For those people that do commute from West Hawaii to East Hawaii and has never used Saddle Road, they should try it. Aloha, I'm David Bach, editor of the Hawaii Tribune Herald. Last year, the newspaper reported hundreds of stories that had a significant impact on the East Hawaii community. The Tribune Herald looked at all those stories and narrowed down the list to choose the 10 news events we thought were most important. So for the next half hour, sit back and relax as we present 10 stories that helped shape the community in 2007, right here on KHHB-TV. Mahalo. The physician shortage on the Big Island has impacted many residents. Many doctors are not accepting new patients, and with an influx of new residents to the Big Island, the problem is turning into a crisis. I think the reason for the physician shortage is uh, that one, uh, recruiting physicians to the Big Island is not, or to any uh, island I would say in the state, is not an easy uh, fit to, um, and then also because of the uh, expenses that it and cost of living here as opposed to other places but in general physician shortage is not unique to just I believe the state of Hawaii but it is a nationwide crisis. The issue is complex with many factors contributing to the shortage of doctors. Currently within the East Hawaii community and I would suppose m most of the major outlying islands um, they depend heavily upon uh, private practice physicians uh, setting up their own practices. In the previous uh, years, that was more of a common practice. Now with new physicians coming freshly out of school or just you know in practice a few five, 10 years, a lot of them are looking to join group practices where they don't have the overhead, they don't have to worry about paying staff. Um, and then also in addition to that, they don't have to worry about the poor reimbursement from insurance companies, which is making business for them very hard to do and manage. Hilo Medical Center is looking into at least one possible remedy. One is having uh, the medical center, one, participate in employing physicians, which is new for uh, Hilo. Um, it was normally where the physicians were all, you know, single practitioners or a group of two or three. Um, it's now at the point where we, where the medical center needs to look at employing these physicians um, and taking on that uh, responsibility. Regional hospital boards are also being planned across the state after passage of new legislation signed by Governor Lingle. However, there doesn't appear to be a short-term fix. We're glad to report that the full force of Flossie never hit the island. Back in August, it looked like a storm to rival Iniki, a Category 4 storm with winds up to 140 miles per hour. The governor declared a state of emergency, businesses shut down, and emergency services were ready to act. We activated full on Sunday, you know, Sunday night. That we were on hurricane watch, I remember the morning 5 o'clock day after so it's not that uh, we uh, forecast anything just that you know this is something that bears watching I'm a, I'm a very conservative person on that side so I called uh, a full EOC meeting of all the potential responders on Sunday uh, because I did not want them to wake up Monday morning and find out through the news we we're on hurricane watch and I knew that was a possibility. When we got the call um, and was alerted um, both by um, our office at, in Honolulu, as well as with um, civil defense. Um, we will go automatically into the preparedness mode, which was to be on standby, um, to alert our volunteers to be on standby, particularly those that would be our shelter managers. But it turned out that the storm skimmed South Point, and in just over a day, winds dropped to below hurricane level. And like I said, any time there's a system that potentially, you know, uh, that can affect this state or this, uh, not this state, this island, 
you know, we watch it very carefully. And the SOP, standard operating procedure here is a staff are instructed, you know, to monitor each out the uh, so-called uh, update the National Weather F Service uh, puts out and to start plotting once she reaches 140. And uh, this is what we did. And you compare all data, you, you know, and then you make a decision. And the Red Cross was also ready to act. The other thing that we planned, um, I felt we planned well, was to be sure that in case the, the worst happened, that we would have proper staffing um, to fill in those days or even weeks should the shelters be open for more than three days. So although Flossie never materialized to the extent first projected, good did come from a potential storm. It was good practice for the volunteers. They never have an opportunity, or I should say, I shouldn't say never. They rarely have the opportunity to use the skills that they were trained in to provide service to the community. So Flossie gave us a good practice ground for the volunteers. Yeah. I don't care how many experiences you have, and I really mean that. You know, I don't care how many you uh, have. You still will learn from each and every one because every system is different. And uh, you learn more and more about nature's ways with everyone and how to get better in, in doing your job. The long-standing debate over big box superstores came to a head in 2007 when Councilman Stacy Heeger proposed a ban of stores larger than 90,000 square feet containing a supermarket section of 20,000 square feet and carrying more than 25,000 different items. I was worried um, possibly that this could drive out a lot of the smaller um, food store chains, thus impacting a lot of our, our local agricultural farmers and, and people who do local business or local growers. So I was concerned about, about um, the wide range effect of a, of a superstore entering our, our community here. Walmart then announced plans to open such a superstore on 15.5 acres of Department of Hawaiian Homelands property behind its current Hilo store. The county's planning department countered with a proposal to create specific superstore zones. Accusations flew between members of DHHL and the county council, and the council finally rejected the bill. For me, I changed my position. I voted against my own bill because I listened to the people out there. There are people out there that were crying for relief. They want to be able to get the best prices for um, the best um, best price and uh, stretch their dollars as far as possible. So I. I those people swayed me and you know even though I introduced the bill I ended up voting against it. In November Walmart announced it was putting its plans for the Superstore on a definite hold not indicating if their decision was influenced by politics or by a decline in company-wide profits. We hope you've enjoyed this program. In the coming weeks we'll be presenting more television news features brought to you by the Hawaii Tribune Herald and KHHB TV. I'm David Bach. Thanks for watching.